You know, life was easier as a kid. Before the weight of the world was on your shoulders, I don't know about you, but my toys were fun. They didn't sit on the shelf in the package. They got played with a lot. My name's Doug, and I miss my toys. We're back again, and it's time for another edition of Intellivision vs. the Arcade. As I've said before, we were always looking for that real arcade experience at home. This title was one of my favorites of those. This is Congo Bongo. Congo Bongo was put out by Sega in the arcade and for home consoles in 1983. It appeared on many platforms, but the one I was interested in was, of course, the Intellivision. I enjoyed playing this in the arcade and I thought it looked so cool that I wanted it at home. We're looking at the arcade version first. Here's the title screen, of course, and uh, we're going to get it started here, and you'll get a chance to see what this looks like. I always like this beginning because uh, it actually shows character. That's kind of why I like these games. Uh, so the, the uh, explorer gets a hot foot by the, uh, the monkey, and he's really upset, so he goes after him on his turf. And uh, here we're going to kind of make our way up to him here. Climbing up, you saw the... Uh, the ravine move there. Now these monkeys can climb on you and get stuck on you. That one got stuck on me. And you have to kind of jump to shake them off. And then I went into the water. So anyway, um, because of this three-quarter perspective, the way that this looks, uh, this was kind of new at the time. There weren't a lot of games that did this. And uh, it was kind of difficult to, uh, to get used to, to control. Because you're used to going either just left or right, or left, right, up and down. And here you got to go on an angle. Um, kind of like how Cubert was uh, back then, you know. So uh, it was it took a little getting used to, but uh, I just, you know, even if I was wasting my quarter, I just thought it looked so cool. There we go. Back to the top. And uh, now you chase him to the next screen. And it'll load up just like that. Okay, and you can see here now we've got uh, scorpions and snakes and a hippo to deal with. So I'm going to make my way over again, jump the snake, get killed by the snake. <laughs> you see here, now this is the uh, the second screen uh, that, I, that, uh, that I got to. The uh, arcade version has, there we go, nice move, got uh, over the hippo and chasing him down. Now we're going to move on to the third screen. Uh, anyway, I was saying the uh, arcade version had four screens um, to deal with. This is the third one here and uh, um, now you've got charging rhinos which killed me pretty much immediately uh, you don't move very fast so it's kind of hard to get around them uh, so that's it for me uh, I didn't even get to the fourth screen uh, I'm going to enter my name here because I actually uh, got the top score <laughs> so uh, this is what the fourth screen looks like um, I didn't get there but uh, it uh, was on there now let's look at the Intellivision version I still have everything here, although it's a bit worse for wear these days. Here's the box, instructions, and cartridge. There were no overlays in the box when I got it new back in 1983. Okay, we're going to get a one-player game going here. And it has the same thing in the beginning. I thought this was so cool. This is one of the reasons why I wanted it, because it's that arcade experience. You now he gets a hot foot, he's upset. And this is what the game looks like on the Intellivision. Now, of course, it looks different. It's a little simpler and everything, and the characters don't have as much uh, expression because there's not as much room for detail. But the, uh, and I fell. Uh, <laughs> the uh, mechanics are there. And uh, this was also difficult to navigate on the Intellivision with the diagonals and stuff like that. Um, that made it kind of kind of tough to, to do. But it was all there. And uh, at the time when I got this, uh, I had played it so much I really had all the, uh, you know, the ways that you moved and the patterns memorized. And now since it's been several years since I've really played this, there we go, to the top. So we're going to move on to the next screen here. And uh, as you can see now, this is a little bit different than, uh, than what we saw in the arcade. Um, this, is the, this is the fourth screen that I had showed you before. On the Intellivision version, there's only two screens. And... Um, the mechanics in this game make it really, really difficult to get across. So uh, here I'm on the uh, hippo, and you have to get on this island. Now you've got sharks and rhinos to contend with. And uh, the rhino makes kind of a low farting noise that's him charging. Uh, 
Okay. And uh, I'm going to jump off the shark here, and you'll see bad detection, and I can't even get on the land, even though I probably should have landed. But um, it was was tough because you had to kind of gauge where, where you could land and where you couldn't, and uh, his jumps were a little erratic, and I died again. So <laughs> that's the end of that. But... Um, I liked the Intellivision version of this. I really thought that it captured that uh, arcade experience. And back in the day, I could uh, go through those screens over and over again. And, uh, of course, you know, games were simpler back then and we didn't get tired of it. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I would say that this arcade uh, conversion is uh, it's looking pretty good. This is looking good. Um, I, uh, I always enjoyed it. Uh, still a, a great uh, Intellivision game and a great arcade conversion. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of I Miss My Toys. Thanks so much for coming by and checking things out. Love it when you come by. Please share, tell your friends, uh, hit the like on there, and uh, we'll see you the next time on I Miss My Toys.